Welcome to the next part of the module on Android services and the local interprocess communication mechanisms, which begins our analysis of how to program a bound service. A bound service offers a client-server interface that allows extended two-way conversations between one or more clients and the service, as shown in an earlier video. To understand how to develop a bound service with a pair of messengers, this part will analyze key elements and steps in the design of an application that concurrently retrieves a system-wide persistent unique identifier and displays it to the user. Before delving into the details of this program, we'll first outline the overall structure and functionality of the unique ID generator application. This application contains a unique ID generator activity that calls bind service on a unique ID generator service when Android calls its onStart lifecycle hook method. This service returns a reference to a messenger via its onBind factory method. The activity receives this reference via the onServiceConnectedHook method and stores it in a local data member. When the user clicks the Generate Unique ID button, the activity uses the messenger reference to send a request message to the service. This message contains a reference to a reply messenger defined in the activity that the service uses to return the system-wide unique ID back to the activity. The service receives this message via a handle message hook method and enqueues the message in a background thread for subsequent processing. This background thread generates the unique ID and returns the result by calling send on the reply messenger reference. The activity then receives this reply message via a handle message hook method and displays the unique ID to the user. The source code for the unique ID generator application is available at this link, so download it and watch this video and the next one carefully, perhaps multiple times, to learn how it works. This example contains four primary classes, as well as various Android bound service, concurrency, and communication mechanisms. So we'll progressively analyze the design and implementation from various perspectives to show how all the pieces work and fit together. We'll now summarize the steps involved in programming a bound service using our unique ID generator application as a running example to reify each step. In general, a client, typically an activity, launches a bound service by calling the bind service method to create a so-called persistent connection, as discussed here. For example, the unique ID generator activity uses a factory method to create an intent command that identifies the service to start, which in this case is the unique ID generator service. In addition to passing the intent to bind service, the client must also provide a service connection object that's used to monitor the connection with the service. Hook methods defined in the service connection object are automatically called back by Android's service framework when connections are established and lost, as shown here. In response to the bind service call, Android's Activity Manager service launches a service, if it's not already running, using the activator pattern described here. The Activity Manager service starts the service asynchronously, so the bind service method does not block the client synchronously while the unique ID generator service is being launched and run. After the service is up and running, Android's service framework invokes the onCreate and onBind hook methods to perform initialization activities. It inherits these methods from the service superclass. The unique ID generator service's onCreate method initializes its data members, such as the messenger, that handles requests for unique IDs, an object that stores these IDs persistently, and an executor that manages a pool of threads used to process client requests concurrently. Likewise, onBind returns an iBinder object that enables the client to communicate with the bound service. The object returned from onBind is typically initialized in the onCreate hook method or in a data member definition. For example, the unique ID generator service's onBind factor method calls getBinder to return the iBinder its request messenger uses to communicate with its associated request handler, as discussed here. Although multiple clients can connect to a bound service, Android's service framework only calls the service's onBind factor method to retrieve the iBinder when the first client binds. It caches this iBinder and redelivers it to any additional clients that bind without calling onBind again, as discussed here. The service connection class implements a callback-driven protocol 
that the Android Service Framework uses to establish a connection between a client and a bound service. After a connection to the service has been established, this framework automatically dispatches the on-service connected hook method to give the client the iBinder object of the communication channel that's connected to the service. The unique ID generator activity overrides this method to get the iBinder to the messenger that's returned from the onBind factory method, which is then encapsulated in a new messenger reference data member for later use. The Android service framework automatically dispatches the on-service disconnected hook method when a connection to the service has been lost. This can happen when the process hosting the service has crashed or has been killed by the Android runtime. This hook method does not remove the service connection itself, which remains active. So the client will receive a callback to on-service connected when the bound service is up and running again. The client can interact with the service after the connection is established and the on-service connected method returns it the interface to the communication channel. This interface can be generic, such as the mechanisms that perform inter-process communication in the unique ID generator application via send and handle message calls on messenger and handler objects, respectively. An interface can also be type-specific, such as the mechanisms for inter-process communication based on the Android interface definition language, shown in an upcoming video. Both approaches use the Android binder framework and implementation patterns, such as broker and proxy. The unique ID generator application uses a pair of messengers to communicate. The unique ID generator service defines a request messenger that encapsulates a request handler. This messenger is passed to the unique ID generator activity by the onBind factory method and subsequently used to send a request to the service. Likewise, unique ID generator activity defines a reply messenger that encapsulates a reply handler. This messenger is passed to the unique ID generator service as the reply to field in the request message and used to send the unique ID back to the activity. When a bound service is launched, its lifecycle typically depends on the components accessing it. In particular, a bound service usually doesn't run in the background indefinitely, but instead is managed automatically by the Android service framework based on whether it's bound to any clients, as shown here. When a client is done interacting with a bound service, it calls unbind service, which informs the Android service framework that the client no longer wants to receive calls if the service is restarted. When all clients have unbound from a service, the Android service framework calls its onUnbind hook method, which returns false by default, but can be programmed to return true if the service's onRebind hook method should be called later when new clients bind to it. OnRebind is used when a service continues running after all its clients have unbound, which happens if a bound service is also a started service, which is an uncommon but supported use case, as discussed here. When a service is unbound from all clients, Android Service Framework dispatches its onDestroy hook method unless it's also a started service. This hook method cleans up any resources that may have been allocated, such as shutting down the thread pool executor in the unique ID generator service. It's a good idea to call unbind service when an activity stops or when it's done interacting with a bound service, so the Android service framework can shut down the service when it's not being used. When a client activity is destroyed, Android automatically unbinds it from any bound services it's connected to. In summary, a bound service is the server in client-server interactions that run on Android devices. For example, the unique ID generator application defines a bound service that allows activities to bind to the service, send requests, receive replies, and perform inter-process communication. A bound service typically lives only while it serves other application components. For example, the unique ID generator service does not run in the background indefinitely, but only lives as long as the unique ID generator activities that bind to it. It's also possible to define hybrid models that combine bound and started services. In particular, if a bound service also implements the onStart command hook method, it won't be destroyed when it's unbound from all clients. 
if the onUnbind hook method returns true, the onRebind hook method will be called the next time a client binds to the service instead of having it receive a call to onBind. onRebind is past the intent originally used to bind to the service via the bind service method call, as discussed here. Although hybrid services are not nearly as common as either started or bound services, the Android Media Playback service is an example of a hybrid service that's both started and bound, as shown at this path name.